The transfer portal never slows down for Texas Tech, and neither do we. In today's video, we'll discuss the latest Texas Tech transfer portal target, as well as could Texas Tech potentially have some official visits set up for later this week after dead period is over? We'll discuss that and much more in today's video. Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's RC Maxwell here for the Back to 12 podcast. And listen, y'all know the drill by now. Like the video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that notification bell to stand to know on all things Texas Tech men's basketball all year long. And better yet, to join the largest group of Texas Tech fans here on YouTube. So once again, hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell. All right, let's jump straight into this. And this name could be familiar to some that really just like Big 12 basketball overall in Red Raider Nation, but let's jump right into it. It's Selton Miguel from South Florida. He is a USF transfer, not UCF transfer. He has one year of eligibility left. And the reason that this name may sound familiar to some watching the video is he actually started his collegiate career at Kansas State up in Manhattan. He is a 6'4", 210-pound guard who averaged just under 15 points per game, 14.7 to be exact, 3.2 rebounds, 2.2 assists, and 1.2 steals per game. He made the All-AAC second team this past year and was also named the sixth man of the year as well as the most improved player in the conference. Now, he also shot 39% from deep on 5.5 attempts per game. That's efficient if you ask me. Basically making two threes per game. Can't get too mad at that. I talked about his shooting a little bit there in terms of the percentages. He's also has 18 made threes from 25 plus feet or further. You like that range. Now, let's go into the percentiles in terms of where he ranks nationally from catch and shoot opportunities, spot up, isolation, everything like that. He ranks 80th percentile in terms of catch and shoot nationally this past year and had a 57% efficiency field goal percentage. You can't get mad at that, right? Then you look at it, ranked 76th percentile in spot up shooting, averaging 1.07 points per possession. Pretty solid right there. If you're above one, you're doing a solid job. He's also a really good passer and has a high basketball IQ with a 17% assist rate. Once you get above 15%, you're doing solid in my opinion, right? He's a tough physical player. And really, this, this is both sides of the floor, but specifically on the offensive side of the floor, he is a tough physical player in isolation. He actually ranked 83rd percentile in the country last year when it came to being efficient in the isolation aspect of the game. I mentioned him being physical. That translates to the defensive side as well, where he can guard multiple positions. You probably feel most comfortable with him guarding one through three. Maybe if it's an undersized four, you're okay with it, but you're really going to feel good about him guarding guards that are ones and twos and maybe a little bit smaller or guys closer to his size, but he is going to be super physical and be a guy that creates mismatches from that perspective just because of the physicality and, well, how efficient he is in the sense of steps, movements, and his footwork defensively. He's one of those guys where it feels like he always has his body in the proper position, and it's because of how efficient he is with his feet and his hips. You notice that he's really always in the proper spot. So that was something that stood out to me, and he's a guy that I think Texas Tech is very interested in as well as a lot of other high major programs. Now, as I mentioned, he is an experienced player. And he's a guy that can play on or off the ball. I think right now with his skill set, you feel better off the ball. But that doesn't mean he can't be a primary ball handler in certain sets, specifically in the pick and roll type situation. Now, when I look at his skill set, it is abundantly clear Texas Tech is going after certain things in the portal. And he checks a lot of the boxes in terms of can he catch and shoot? Is he a multi you know, positional guy on the defensive end where he can guard one, twos, and threes also? Can he be a primary ball handler? What kind of production did he have for a winning program? Quite a bit of production, if you ask me. So he checks a lot of boxes for the Red Raiders. Now, things are heating up in the portal in the sense of, well, let's get this out of the way first. I mentioned it in the last video before we went into this past weekend, and I'm sure you could tell. Got a little bit of sun this weekend um, there on the face, but Reminder, currently in a dead period for college basketball. For those that don't know what a dead period is, it's where coaches cannot have players come on and have an official visit. You can, if you are a coach, still contact them. 
whether that's through social media, text, phone call, whatever it may be. I guess you could send a fax if you wanted to, but it's not 19, what, 87? Anyway, the dead period started on Thursday, April 4th. Shout out to my wife's birthday. It ends on Thursday, April 11th at noon Eastern. Now, Again, I told you just a second ago that that does not mean that coaches cannot contact players. It's just official visits cannot happen. The rumors right now in the Texas Tech men's basketball space and things that we're reporting over on the Scarlet and Black Insider, by the way, go join one of the fastest growing Texas Tech communities over there to stay in the know on all things Texas Tech men's basketball all year long as well. Um, it sounds like there's going to be at least a couple, if not a few, official visitors here in the not too distant future for the Red Raiders. It sounds like they are trying to get everything squared away. By the time you're hearing this, it will be Monday, April 8th. They're trying to get things done by the 8th or the 9th in terms of getting official visits set up and get guys on campus. And why is that such a big deal? If you remember last year and year number one of Grant McCaslin, the Red Raiders were six for six when it came to official visitors committing to Texas Tech and five for six in terms of guys actually playing. Now, the reason that it wasn't six for six was, well, because Deshaun Jackson failed a physical or there was a medical thing that they didn't really feel comfortable about and he went back to Charlotte. But everybody that came on an official visit to Texas Tech last year committed to Texas Tech. So if you're going after some guys that you really like in the portal, we'll keep you up to date over on the Scarlet and Black Insider in terms of the guys that will be on campus here in the not too distant future for the Red Raiders. But that's kind of what's going on behind the scenes and why it's been a little bit quiet in terms of activity. They typically do this around the national championship game. And how about Coach Cal? Wow, leaving Kentucky to go to Arkansas. I grew up in Arkansas for half my life. I know Wu Pig is going crazy right now. Um, but from a Texas Tech standpoint, there will be a lot more buzz as this week progresses through, well, Still getting to the 11th of April, the 12th of April this coming up weekend, because you're going to see and hear a lot of official visitors, not only for Texas Tech, but around the country in the sense of guys going to certain programs and potentially landing at those certain programs as things really, really heat up in the portal. And the Red Raiders are firmly in that mix. There's no doubt about that. One more time, got to promote Scarlet and Black Insider. You can see the link. It'll be down in the comments below. Go join one of the fastest growing, well, not one of the fastest growing, the fastest growing Texas Tech community on the internet today. If you want to stay in the know on everything Texas Tech men's basketball, whether that's on the hardwood, the portal, we're telling you stories about the past as well. We're keeping you up to date on spring ball as well. Go join over there. I'll have the link down in the description and the comments below. And one more time before we head out of here, if you haven't already, be sure to like the video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that notification bell to stay in the know on Texas Tech men's basketball all year long right here with the largest group of Texas Tech fans on YouTube and the Back to 12 podcast channel.